Welcome back to our moment-to-moment -moment analysis of The Matrix in search of secrets and easter eggs. In our last episode, Neo was at his job at Metacortex. He receives a phone in the mail and a warning that they're coming for him. Neo tried to escape but was too scared to reach the scaffolding outside the window. He is caught and arrested by the agents. Now we enter Mr. Anderson's famous interrogation scene and the formal introduction of Agent Smith. What secrets we will find this time? Welcome to Matrix Explained. Welcome to the desert of the real. We would like to announce our new giveaway. Many of you really wanted a copy of the Matrix Comics 20th Anniversary Collection, so we will be once again giving away a free copy of this graphic novel with a poster of the original 1999 Matrix film. For your chance to win, subscribe to this channel, leave a like on this video, and leave in the comment section below which character would you like to see return in Matrix 4 and why. The winner will be announced on October 10th. The scene begins with Neo being watched through multiple TV screens. If you haven't seen any of our previous videos, this little detail is important. It shows that the architect has been observing Neo since before he became the one. He may have known that Neo was the anomaly. Agents Brown, Jones, and Smith enter the interrogation room. Smith is holding a folder with files and documents pertaining to Mr. Anderson and Neo. This document reveals valuable information about Thomas Anderson. He was born in Capital City on March 11th, 1962, son of John Anderson and Michelle McGehee. It should be reaffirmed that much of the dialogue in The Matrix has a double meaning. Choi's foreshadowing of Neo's condition as the one and Thomas Anderson's boss talking about choice both contain subliminal messaging. Smith's dialogue in the interrogation scene, while more direct, still has some connotations that can be spotted after watching the movie. Some interesting details regarding the interrogation room itself are that there are no windows. There is a light, metallic hum that fills the gloomy space. It is almost as if this room was uniquely designed for agent interrogations. As you can see, we've had our eye on you for some time now, Mr. Anderson. The we that he is referring to is not just the agents, but the architect as well. And the we had our eye on you for some time may be a bluff since the agents only recently acquired information regarding Neo, though it doesn't completely negate the possibility that the architect may have been observing him for some time. It seems that you've been living two lives. In one life, you're Thomas A. Anderson, program writer for a respectable software company. You have a social security number, you pay your taxes. And you help your landlady carry out her garbage. The other life is lived in computers, where you go by the hacker alias Neo and are guilty of virtually every computer crime we have a law for. Here Smith introduces the concept of duality. Smith lays out the existence of two paths. One is Thomas Anderson who is a normal law-abiding citizen and two is Neo who has become a threat to the Matrix. This duality is essential to the Messiah archetype because most messianic figures are both human and divine. This dichotomy about choosing one way or the other is also an illusion created by the Matrix. This is because both the path of Thomas Anderson and of Neo lead to the same end, the source. The illusion of choice and being able to select between one path or the other can be traced back to the Oracle, who was the one who added the concept of choice to the simulation. One of these lives has a future, and one of them does not. I'm going to be as forthcoming as I can be, Mr. Anderson. You're here because we need your help. The help that Smith is asking is not only for information that will lead him to Morpheus, but for Neo to actually help the machines by becoming the integral anomaly. The anomaly is needed to restart the Matrix so that a new and better iteration can be created, preventing dissidents. So when Smith says that they need his help, he's not lying. The Matrix needs Neo in order to maintain control. We know that you've been contacted by a certain individual. A man who call 
calls himself Morpheus. And whatever you think you know about this man is irrelevant. He is considered by many authorities to be the most dangerous man alive. Neo saw Morpheus as some kind of heroic figure, searching for him through every corner of the web. The agent tries to convince him that he is a dangerous criminal. My colleagues believe that I am wasting my time with you, but I believe you wish to do the right thing. And we're willing to wipe the slate clean, give you a fresh start. And all that we're asking in return is your cooperation in bringing a known terrorist to justice. This bit of dialogue is curious, because this is the first hint at Smith's individualism from the other agents. Mentioning that his colleagues think that he is wasting his time trying to convince Neo shows that Smith is more persuasive and persistent, and his reasoning differs from Brown and Jones. Smith's trait of independent thought evolves further in Morpheus' interrogation scene. Wow, that sounds like a really good deal. But I think I got a better one. How about I give you the finger and you give me my phone call? In a previous video, we discussed the clashing of philosophies between Neo's indeterminism against Smith's determinism. One believes in free will, the other in control and inevitability. Neo flipping the finger at Smith is his way of showing he is in control of his life and that he has rights. Yet nothing is further from the truth. Oh, Mr. Anderson. You disappoint me. You can't scare me with this Gestapo crap. I know my rights. I want my phone call. Once again, Neo is being nonchalant and cocky as he still believes that he is in control. But Smith will make sure that his ideas of free will are shattered. And tell me, Mr. Anderson, what good is a phone call if you're unable to speak? You're going to help us, Mr. Anderson, whether you want to or not. This line of dialogue is the high point of the entire interrogation scene. It shows the power that the agents have over the people that live inside the Matrix. It also proves that the concept of free will that Neo believes in does not exist. Neo refuses to help the machines, but in the end, he doesn't have a choice. In Matrix Revolutions, Neo has to work with the machines in order to save humanity and the Matrix, meaning that Smith was right, the machines needed his help. The agents insert a tracking device into Neo's body. This particular tracker is like some sort of metallic insect or crustacean, somewhat similar to the Sentinels. It forces itself into Neo's body through his belly button. Then he wakes up in his apartment, wondering if what he went through was a dream. We've pointed out before that the Matrix has many scenes of Neo waking up, alluding to his state of mind while inside the Matrix. Neo can't tell the difference between what is a dream and what is real. His phone rings. It's Morpheus. This line is tapped, so I must be brief. They got to you first, but they've underestimated how important you are. If they knew what I know, you would probably be dead. Morpheus is sure that the agents were not aware of Neo being the one, so they let him live in order to use him as bait. This may be true, but then again, the agents may have been acting under the architect's orders to leave him alive. This could answer one of the most frequent questions about the Matrix and this channel. If the agents knew about Neo and the threat he posed to the Matrix, why didn't they kill or assimilate him from the beginning? Either they didn't know, or they were ordered by the architect to not kill him. Yet, doing so that early would have prevented the anomaly from manifesting itself. And as Smith said, they needed him. What are you talking about? What, what is happening to me? You are the one, Neo. You see, you may have spent the last few years looking for me, but I've spent my entire life looking for you. Now, do you still want to meet? Yes. Then go to the Adam Street Bridge. This is the first time that Morpheus acknowledges Neo as the one and that he has been looking for him his entire life. Next will be Neo's most important and difficult decision that he must make. Should he give up or stay in Wonderland and see how deep the rabbit hole goes? For Matrix Explained, please leave a like and subscribe. And thank you for visiting 
the desert of the real.